Reagan got rid of those, didn't he? All those psych wards. Wasn't that a big thing that he Turned took? Turned them loose, for? put them out on the street. Yeah, and then like a lot of them ended, or just like put them in prison. Maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe it was like he's releasing these insane people, and then they go out in the world and they commit crimes, or they're homeless and like you know it's, do something transient or illegal, and then they're thrown into prison with like real criminals. And it's just like someone who had a like, you know paranoid schizophrenia. Did you ever hear yeah. about that, Woody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is. As far as I know, that's all right. Yeah. Because yeah. like, are they back now? Like, they don't really. I don't think so. Really I don't really think there are been mental... undone. No, no. I feel like that's what homeless are. Oftentimes, you know, people. For sure. Who are... I, I was just downtown last week. I'm shooting. I'm, I'm making a music video, and I went down to shoot some video down there. And you know, again, I spent some time with the, it, my father. You know, he exposed me to this type of um, this, this psychosis, really. Mm -hmm. And it's very recognizable that the gates the way that way you walk uh the way you carry yourself the all the indicators are you know i 99 percent of the people i saw downtown and i saw hundreds i mean it, it's a downtown la has blocks and blocks of, mm -hmm. of tent buildings and the the gate the walk you can tell the some are on, on, on medications they just kind of not in, there's no reality there so that's there's thousands of them down there and those are the individuals that you know should be sort of being helped in an institution someplace but they don't exist we have we have an old prison that could easily be transitioned into a some type of facility to help these folks but we don't have the political will to say look it you know let's put them in there get them help get them to treatment but we don't want to uh, but it's about their dignity they, they they're <laughs> you don't want to infringe on their dignity well you live in a fucking street where's the dignity in that yeah. So yeah, there's. I mean, a lot of it. Very few people I that I believe on the street that I've run into are cog are there because they want to be or because they have a choice not to be. It's not. Or, it, or even if they do are making that choice, they're not capable of making that choice. Really. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it, yeah. When I was in Seattle, um, that's the worst I've ever. I mean, I've seen the tent villages in L.A. and it's awful, but there was something about seeing them in Seattle, <clears throat> where like. We went down by, I don't know if it's called the wharf or whatever, but it's like down by the water where all the like, there's like mm -hmm. a carousel and like, it's where all those seafood restaurants are. It's a real nice little trendy area. That, and we all went down there for dinner. And then we started walking back to the hotel. It's maybe half a mile walk. Like everything's uphill in Seattle for some reason. And like, <laughs> we just walked through this area and there they are. They're just coming out of the shadows like a Michael Jackson thriller video. Just like 80, 90 of them. Just like walk, and I don't know if it was like methadone night or like they were all heading toward the same place for some reason or another, but it was ridiculous. And then the same thing in Atlanta. Whenever I picked uh, Chiz up from the bus uh, station that time, they were uh, they were having like they had the food truck out there that was giving away like the meals for uh, for all the homeless. These you know styrofoam plate meals, and there must have been between 50 and 100 of them like lined up getting these meals and then you could see them like they get the meal and it was probably like a sandwich and some chips and an apple or something like that because like they eat it rapidly and then throw the fucking styrofoam plate on the ground and so you just saw them like tumbling in the wind every fucking where all throughout like that park area it was absurd super fucked up that's where like chiz got off the bus or train or whatever the fuck it was, I mean, whatever mode of transformation, <laughs> transportation from the 1800s he picked that week. Horse and carriage. He got he got off the fucking <laughs> carriage, and uh, and um, like immediately got propositioned for weed. Like he's he's like I just had stepped foot into the state of Georgia, and this guy was like, Yo, you want some weed? And I was like, just everywhere. I it's guess real, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess. I'm not gonna say I mean, no. I took the bus so I could bring my own, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to type. I remember yeah. my my grandpa, who's you know in his late seventies now. He talks about yeah. like doing class where he's like, "I'm the shit," and he was a farmer and you know trucker that kind of guy, and was like, "Shit, I remember they were trying to get us. They told us these top riders are." Fuck, they said they're like the way of the future. And I was like, there ain't no way in hell I'm learning this bullshit. This is for the girls. They'll do it. And then, like, and he'll even say, he's like, I wish I took it serious. I'm, you know, he's probably at the time, he's like, I'm 68 and I can't type worth a lick. And, like, he's still, like, hunting and pecking or, like, dictating uh, to people. Yeah. I've said before, he, for, it wasn't until 2019 that he started texting. His only text up to 2019 was my grandma texting him and saying, like, hey, do you mind if we have company over tonight? And he just said, no 
Like, don't, don't bring anybody <laughs> over. <laughs> and that was it. No, okay. now, I took it the other way. Do you mind? No. Or I'm sorry. He said, can, can we have company over tonight? No. no. And, and she's like, and I was kind of proud of him. I didn't think he knew how to text. I was expecting him to call me. <laughs> like, yeah. Dude, when I was Shit. young, so I, I went to college in like the early first half. Well, I started college in the first half of the 90s. And there was like debate over whether or not computer skills were good. Right, because there was an argument that it would pigeonhole you into a worker position, and if your aspirations were like management and senior management, then you, those are not typing positions. Like that was the thought process. They now, saw it as like you'd be walking around dictating to someone. Sure, you sure. That's, you, that's probably around that same time where that there was that like Life um, article about computers being a fad or something like that though, right? The, yeah, the internet, the, the internet was going to be this fad that would just like come and go. That's that's an idiot economist like Paul Krugman who's wrong yep. about everything where he was like by the time 2003 rolls around the internet will have had no more impact on the economy than a fax machine. It's like this guy's still allowed to give opinions about the economy. Like that should First be First of all, the fax machine be- had a huge impact on the economy that can't be overlooked. But the internet, of course, is just, just I mean, they what compared, compares to the internet? The fucking yeah. like, like Nothing, industrialization? A lot of early <laughs> yeah. internet stuff was chat rooms. And uh, now, uh, yeah, it, it was chat rooms and, like, yeah. company billboards. It was the equivalent of, like, a glossy pamphlet they'd hand out. You know, there's a, mm-hmm. five or six pages for Coca-Cola that explains why you drink soda or something. I don't know. And, uh, and that and chat rooms was, to me, early internet. And... There was like legit debate over whether this was the next CB radio. You know, CB radio, I'm told, in the 70s was like this hip mm. thing, everyone talking to each other, and then it just kind of faded away. Did you ever have one? Like, fuck around on? I the have market. one in the Tacoma. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 always, I wanted one really bad. As a kid, for some reason, I was fascinated with like walkie talkies. I thought they were. I thought the science of being able to like talk to a guy, you know, that wasn't in front of me was really cool. Obviously, we had telephones, but this is the yeah. thing you carry in your pocket, and this is pre cell phone. So, like, mm-hmm. I loved walkie talkies. I always wanted a new set for Christmas, and uh, and then finally, I I learned about CB radios, and I was like, I want a legit CB radio. My dad got me one that had like this huge antenna, like. I don't know. I don't want to exaggerate how big the antenna was, but it was like it had that magnetic base so you could stick it on the roof of your truck mm. and like maybe eight feet of antenna. And yeah. so like, I don't know what the range was, but at least 20 miles, something like that. Cause like we could sit at my house and I could talk to guys who were like on the inter- interstate system, which we live near and just fuck with truckers. Just, just be an asshole kid, you know, just, breaker, breaker, people, one nine. breaker, breaker, one nine. Mm-hmm. Or you'd hear like some lady, like talking to a guy, like, like having a oh. private conversation. Like it was like, Hey, how, how you doing tonight? And he's like, I'm just sitting down on my easy chair about to have a beer and that the dogs here. Just looking at the moon, thinking about you. And she's like, Oh, that's so sweet. And I come on there. I come on there. Like making fart noises or whatever, and, like on their channel. And they're like, what, "What was that? I don't know. Was that not on your end?" And I'm just like, hee, hee. "I'm fucking Bart Simpson over there being an asshole, like twelve year old." Dude, or whatever. we did. So I had a, a CB radio, a handheld one. It doesn't sound quite as cool as yours, but it was cool. And antennas went up like four feet out of a handheld radio, and like big, thick telescoping antenna. And uh, mostly, I was just a dumb kid with nothing interesting to say. So. I would ask for radio checks. You know, I'd be like, all right, this is a uh, pirate bear. Can I have a radio check? They'd be like, come in at five by five. It's just, a, it's the only way I knew how to get people to respond to me. I'd ask for radio checks. Yeah. I'd do it every fucking day, 10 times a day. I'd ask for radio <laughs> checks. And uh, although one time I did what you did, which was like to sort of interrupt people's conversations and maybe doubt that somebody was telling the truth, like that kind of thing as they're, you know, talking on the radio. And this guy... I don't know what system he had, but I think he used my signal strength to find us. And (laughs) yeah, so I keep talking and he's like, I'm finding you. I'm finding you. And I'm like, you know how the hell you are? You can't find me on a CB radio. (laughs) I'm on a CB radio. Yeah. And then he's like, you are. Yeah. And and then he's like, I'm in a tow truck and I'm in front of your house. And he was, it was like this (laughs) motherfucker. 
oh my god now I, I i wasn't dumb i'm like 14 so i'm pretty dumb but i'm not like yeah. a, a dumb dumb yeah. and it's like he doesn't know which of these houses it is right he just yeah. knows that i'm nearby yeah. so we went radio silence there and the, and the thread ended and stuff but yeah he, getting close loser like <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he legit found us in his tow truck and, and there's a horror movie that that's that, that has this premise where what? they're like messing yeah 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 yeah, and um, then like the semi chases him down, and it yeah, it's like it's a guy really a, terrible. Is that Jeepers Creepers? I don't think it's Jeepers Creepers. No, it's it's, uh, it's like a guy and a girl like on like a road trip, and they're like goofing around on the radio. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I think it might be Jeep. Anyway, it's like the guy in the semi is on there, and, and the dude who's driving the car gives the radio to his girlfriend, and she's like flirting with him. Like he's just like. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not much to look at. And, and she's like, looks don't mean anything to me, big bear. Like, like, I just like your voice and I can tell that you're a real man, a working man. And I, and, and like, they do this whole thing where like, she's flirting with him and she tells him that she's staying at this motel and they're at the motel. And then the truck driver actually shows up, goes to the motel room that she told him about and kills whoever's in there. Cause it's just some dude, you know, staying yeah. in a motel room. So he... He's and he. She's and he's like unrelated to her, the dude. Unrelated to and and sh she's just like, yeah, bring a bottle of pink champagne, and he shows up with like this bottle of pink champagne, and like it's a dude, and he murders him, and like then the movie like really goes off the rails as it goes on. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's, it's I think I just linked. It. I think it's called Joyride. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that might be it. Huh. Yeah, I've seen that movie. It is uh, you know, it's not great. I'm surprised. It's not you good. No, I'm surprised you remember that much about it. I yeah. Um, the part you got to, or just describing, it doesn't get any better. It's that over and over. <laughs> and then I think in the end, like, like there are a lot of opportunities for the smaller car to escape from the semi. Of you know? course, because it's faster in it's a every semi. conceivable way. Yeah. yeah this guy isn't, it's not even just a regular semi. I think for a lot, for most of the movie, he's, like, pulling a load. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chasing them at 58 oh, miles I, I, an I hour. Oh, Oh, Jim Beaver is in this. Uh, he's the Jim guy Jim. from... Um, um, What's the movie with the two brothers who fight fucking crime, who fight fucking vampires and shit? Um, vampires. Supernatural. Yeah, supernatural. Yeah, oh, I couldn't oh. think of it for a second. He's the he's uh he's in the, he's in that. I've told the story of my, my buddy who had the bats before. It, it, mm -hmm. in, in fast forward, bats in his chimney. He calls people. They put him on a list. Now he can't get rid of the bats. He has to house the bats until they choose to leave. Now he's a bat keeper. Yeah. He's, everything in his attic needs to be thrown away. Um, he and his family need to be vaccinated. I guess when you get like bat rabies or something, the chances of this are too high to fuck with. By the time you show symptoms, you're dead. You can yeah. get treated for it, but you can't wait for symptoms to see if you have it. Then you're dead. So he and his family all needed to be treated for rabies, which cost $6,000 for each member of his family of six. Oh. He has oh, four no. children. Yeah. And he could have bought us. He could have bought an F-150. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring that up to him. <laughs> so, uh, he could have bought a sound generator for a hundred bucks and driven him out of the acoustic. In yeah. He would still well, need the shotgun rabies shotgun and treatment. a bunch of shells and handled it in the afternoon. Or a shotgun, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it absolutely shot. sucked. And then I guess in the fall, they left on their own, and he was able to put up barriers so they don't come back and throw away everything because they just they went like California Condor on all his belongings. Yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous with the protected shit. Like, like I, you know, I, I hunted a lot, and I wouldn't poach things. But, like, every now and then, like, something would just accidentally happen. You know, I shot a banded pigeon down one time, and it's like, do you think we should go tell somebody about this? Fuck no. We're oh. going to throw them in the bushes. We're gonna yeah. Throw them in the bushes. What, do you want to have a bird funeral? Right. I, I could see doing that, too. Like, you don't know what it is at a distance. Uh, yeah, pigeons and doves look a lot alike to a kid. I was, like, 12. I'm blasting. They look a lot alike to someone pushing 50 as well. <laughs> Yeah, there you, go. <laughs> you could yeah. be a California condor for all I know. I can't read that far. Now, I was on a dove field one time, you know, opening day of dove season, and this jackass shot a hawk down. And uh, and they look nothing like, like we all saw the hawk coming, and we're mm -hmm. all like, look, a hawk. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, a hawk does not look like a dove. A hawk looks like a fucking hawk. And, uh, and, and this one fucking jackass, boom. And 
he wasn't even a good shot, but this was like his one in a million fucking shot, and he just folded this fucking hawk in half, and it just ee, thunk, right in the middle of the field. And they're all standing there, like trying to figure out, like you shot it. No, I didn't. You shot it. And he's like, I didn't shoot. You shot it. And we're all like, we all saw you shoot it. And then this one guy who's got some common fucking sense, like rides up on an ATV. He's like, who fucking cares who shot it, fellers? We got to hide the body. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> I'm, yeah, on, that, I'm on team that guy. That's exactly how he sounds, too. He's a good old fella. I know him real well. <laughs> and uh, and then he went and hit the body real quickly. And like not even 10 minutes later, a game warden shows up just to like check licenses and everything. So it's a good thing that he wasn't there when this guy fucking blew a hawk out of the goddamn sky because they're federally fucking protected. You don't shoot hawks. Well, it's not like he'd spend two months in jail. I don't know what they do to you for shooting a hawk, <laughs> but it probably involves a hefty fine. And oftentimes when you do something like poaching related or like you shoot the wrong thing or do it in the wrong way, like they'll take everything that you used in the commission of that crime. Um, so like if you like spotlight deer from the side of the road, like put a spotlight on them and shoot them at night, they'll not only like fine you and potentially give you like community service or even a little bit of jail time, they'll take your pickup truck and your gun that you used in the commission of that crime. There should be insurance for that. Like, yeah, it was Poaching insurance. insurance? It, like, it, it was stolen by the Raleigh PD. Kinda. Poaching insurance. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but, but, but yeah, uh, and a lot of people have, have gotten that before. I know a guy um, who pulled a gun on a game warden one time. He went to prison. Mm. Pulled a gun Why, what was he thinking? Uh, he wasn't thinking. He was a fucking idiot. What was he, the situation? Uh, like, what, what about uh, like, game warden caught him and my cousin um, hunting, and uh, I think that they didn't have hunting licenses, which isn't a huge deal. By That's like the way. a fine, isn't it? It's like a fine, and uh, and uh, my cousin is of course like, well, I guess it's time to pay a fine, and this other guy is like, guess it's time for someone to die, and like pulls a gun on the game warden, and the game warden like jumps back in his car and grabs his AR-15, so now they're in a standoff. So my and my cousin's just like hiding on the ground. I'll pay and, the fine. Uh, because so, he's young. So they arrest the other guy, long story short, and he went back to prison. Okay, the key word being back, because he had spent like a lifetime in and out of juvenile detention centers and uh, in real prison because he had stabbed so many people. He is likes to stab people guy. He kept the <laughs> steak knife on the odometer of his truck so that he could stab people with it. He liked stabbing people. He used Whenever a steak I'd be knife? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he had one on his odometer, like like right out of the kitchen, like a steak knife, like Jesus like you would use, like cut your steak for dinner. Okay. Um, I've never stabbed anyone, and I assume none of us have. Oh, mm -hmm. you can't imagine. But don't you think you'd like it? Right? Like, like, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to hurt somebody like that. No, me either. Okay, th th there's got to be a conversation with. I stabbed a pig. Not yeah, true. I, had that, wait, wait, I, I, I did I fight that that, uh, that wild boar. Um, that was actually yeah. That, actually, yeah. I'm I'm on Team Woody now. It is fun stabbing stuff. You like I stabbing like, the pig though, not a person. Oh come yeah, on, but Taylor. Aren't people there people are very you want to like, stab? Are you imagining you like you're attacked? Sorry, go ahead, James. What did you stab it with? What kind of knife? Uh, like not even the right kind of knife. Like like uh, so we were we were hunting uh, wild boar in uh, in Houston, and we had this writ from the sheriff's department that said we could hunt them within city limits. Uh, I needed that. I needed that for sure. A nice little little tomahawk. But uh, I had shot it in the ass with 300 blackout. Oh, yeah, that would have done the fucking trick because all I had was a big-ass pocket knife. But it was uh, I'd slowed it down with, uh, with a shot of uh, 300 blackout so it couldn't get away. And uh, then like, I wanted to film my, my cousin fighting it with a knife because it was like a 250-pound like, Russian boar. And, uh, and he's like goes at it with a knife, and it sort of like runs at him and like does this like scare tactic maneuvers like, like like don't fuck with me kind of thing and he's like fuck this so i'm like all right give me the knife i'm gonna fight it so i, like, I went and fought it with a knife and killed it i'm with gonna knife. fight I'm, like, it. I'm gonna fight the boar man I'm gonna <laughs> yeah fight that's it. that's exactly what happened i was like i was like, i want to tell I, me you weren't sober when you did that i was very sober i was very sober <laughs> when i did that um some some weed would have helped though because it, it, it bit my inner thigh and like oh. made this blood blister like and i'm lucky it didn't like hook me with its tusk because that's what it was trying yeah. to do it could have like ripped my fem femoral artery out and killed me out there in that fucking field in Texas for. Two hundred fifty pound boar ain't that? That's not a joke. I thought it's you huge. Talking, I got on its back. I got on its back and like it, it was it was as tall. It was tall enough that my feet were still barely touching the ground when yeah. I'm on its back. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah, it's a powerful animal too. Oh my, that's it's. <laughs> well, I cut its throat.
Yeah, that was of course you did. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> then you got to eat it, right? Or someone no, ate it. it. We left it in that field of rock with oh. the rest of them we shot. That's what they do out there. It's about parasites or something, they said. But I don't know. We were just there to exterminate them. Well, yeah, you don't want to fuck around if there's a parasite thing. I don't know. Not my, not my business. I, I, I cut the ear off, though. We had that you bag make a of necklace ears. of them? We did make a necklace of them. You, it's you, in the video. Nice. You, you, you didn't video. grab the tusk? You, you didn't cut the tusk Cut the off? ears off. Cut the ears off cause, because we'd watched too much uh, Rambo. Um, we wanted to make, like, uh, we were trying to make a stupid video. So, so like, in, at the end of the video, like, he's wearing an ear necklace. Were you taking both of the ears from every pig? Just one. Just one. Just we one. weren't cheating. See, uh, I, you know what? I, I respect that. I like it. Yeah, just one, <laughs> one ear from each one. Yeah. We didn't want to cheat. We Man, had those are all right ears. He's legit. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's legit. <laughs> Man, I thought he was going to fool me, but those are all right ears. I know a hog's ear. <laughs> I did not know. You had to beat my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, nonsense. But no, I don't want to stab anybody. That would be awful. Yeah, I tell you what... I, what, I, what I, the thing I want less than stabbing someone is to be stabbed, though. Wouldn't you hate to get stabbed? I didn't, no one would like Sliced. Yeah. Sliced is like Sliced is want. worse. Sliced yeah. is worse. I feel You've like if you would have stabbed me, a doctor could probably... Let's assume it's repairable, right? Uh-huh. You're in for surgery. You're in for, whatever, three weeks of healing. And then it's a story that you tell. If you slice me up, I am permanently maimed. I don't slice like up that. like where? What do you mean? Like, just like across the belly or something? You know, like six random big cuts across my front. Yeah. I've never seen a flat earth flag. But you I know haven't what? either, but I, I, get, I, I mean... What, is, I what does the earth look like on a flat earth flag? Dude, I saw I this guy to believe it's a that sphere. the other day. <laughs> <laughs> they have a ball. They just No, because yeah. they believe there's an ice ring around the they whole They believe planet. different things. This guy was trying to explain the other day that it was like an eyeball with an iris and that it, was, it had like this comet tail behind it and we lived on this stripe in the middle of the ball. But it's not a sphere. It's like, it's more like a, I don't know, a teardrop. Like a, like a long teardrop is what it's shaped like, and we're this stripe that goes around the... It, don't listen to anything they say. The fact that we're discussing it is giving it credence. It's <laughs> absurd. It's absurd. We've Boss seen discussing it from something space. Gives it credence? I don't think so. We've seen the thing from space, and, and, and the fact that... No, those are that, lies. You didn't the know fact that, that they think lies. that every, pers every space organization in the world is in on the same lie is one of the most absurd things ever. That, that, that for some reason... China, Israel, Russia, and the United States all have common ground on this on this one thing, and those are just like a few of the powers. There's that. There to so, do I agree the fact that they? Th but they also have to extend that to the like the whole maritime industry, the whole aviation industry. There are other people who count on the Earth being hey. round. The get yeah, places. Last year, a guy took a, a balloon up to what eighty thousand feet, and he jumped with a camera on his head. Remember this guy? You saw pretty much that, okay, really? this is a round thing. I, it's like, this is a guy, you know, he was up there. People saw yeah. him come down. And I don't know. Are you talking about the, uh, the Red Bull guy? So the yeah, Red Bull guy was up there, like, in space. Remember that? Like, the biggest, yeah, yeah. like, free like fall ever? Feet. Like, yeah, like, you could see the curvature of the planet, <laughs> like, as he's falling. You can see that same curvature from a commercial airplane. Can you? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> like when the you look at the horizon, suck. the horizon's got a little curve to it. Does it? I, I need to look, look again. When you're, go to the beach. Look <laughs> out there. You <laughs> notice how at, at some point the boat just disappears? It's going over the fucking piece horizon. Piece by piece. Yeah, yeah. I, I've flown... Uh, James doesn't know. I, I fly this little personal aircraft called a paramotor, and I've gone to about 12,000 feet. It's like a parachute with a fan on your back. I know exactly what it is, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool. I go to 12,000 feet, Earth looks flat. Completely flat. And I was looking. I, I wanted to see the curve. I'm willing it into existence, and it's like... It's just flat. It's flat from everywhere at 12,000. You can't see it. I don't know at 36. Maybe. You I can see it. Like, when you look at the horizon, the horizon's got a little curve to it. You're, you're, you're yeah, up yeah, there. Like I, 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 climbed, I did some uh, mountain climbing, and I was up to 16,000 feet. Uh -huh. it, it's flat as hell. At 16? Yeah. Yeah, 16,000 feet is flat as hell. I mean, I, but that's because, you know, the, the topography of the Earth, it's, you know, it, it doesn't give you that linear thing. So you are going to have your, and your eyes, your eyes, and plus the curvature has a reflective thing with the light that bounces that. So there's all kinds of science with yeah. that. I feel like if the Earth was really flat, like Russia or China by now, would have exposed it and made us look like fools. Been like, <laughs> oh, look at them. They they lied to you about this round Earth, and then they show like verifiable proof it's flat. Like, you know what? That, really that would have really happened by now. I, I Googled it. It says yeah. Kyle's right. It says you should be able to detect it from an airplane. They cruise at about 35,000 feet, but you need a fairly wide field of view, 60 degrees. 
So do you get that from a window? Probably do. You put your, if your face all the way right? in. Right? You should be just short yeah. of one. It and I do. Not I'm a full a 180, but yeah. It's in what aisle you're in, I think. If you're in that middle <laughs> aisle, you get the seat right next to your face there. Right, you know? if the wing's not there. But if you if you go to like maybe all the way in first class and put your face in the window, you probably get 60 degrees. Maybe. I mean, if you try and barge into the pilot's <laughs> seat. <laughs> hey, I, gotta, I need to have a word with you. <laughs> I need to know it's curved. <laughs> you start barking about the, cur the, the flat earth and pounding on the pilot's door they'll let you right in every time they'll i think that would be a, a cool feature for planes you know how they have those little tvs maybe this is already a thing where like you can you can put stuff in you can like check where you are in your flight mm -hmm. and whatnot mm -hmm. they should have a camera where you can like see, see through the front of the plane they have that they do yeah oh, oh i've never seen that before yeah i've seen that on delta flights really very cool yeah that's, that's so there's great. like a gopro on the front just I, like I don't know to, where it was, but you I can like see to believe outside it's the plane. Cupped. You, you, you yeah. can see a bird when you crash into it. Then you can see the birds coming and you crash into <laughs> it. Yeah, you had a bird. It's gonna be a real problem. It uh, must I, happen I, all the time. I have to get the fuck out of the way. You know, they had those hawks at uh, airplane uh, airports to like run the uh, the yeah. birds off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've, have you, I'm sure we've all seen that demonstration with from Boeing where they're throwing frozen turkeys into the 747 engines or whatever. I have and not they I just, need to find this. The the fucking turbines in like super high speed like photography are going like slicing it. It's like slice, slice, slice. Like 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 segmenting a frozen turkey really? an inch at a time. What a time it's really saver that would be. Cool. Uh, <laughs> and dices and so and it much comes more. out cooked the other side. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> thinking. <laughs> um, yeah. What was I going to say? I was going to talk about the fucking UFO like footage that, that, that keeps coming out with from from like the Navy and the Air Force is really fascinating to me. I saw the um, one debunked one. The, it's green. There's there's so many. I, I don't know. Oh, the, okay. I, I don't know that anything got I didn't know anything got debunked, but I, I see like. You know, is there a video you can it. point to? There's there, lots of videos. There's like a, a what, green, like a, so there's a green one. Uh, it's through night vision. And there are triangles sort of moving around in, in like a weird way. And they pulse a little bit. And like it just doesn't look like anything we've seen. And the, the government came out and said it was a UFO. Which doesn't mean aliens. It means unidentified flying aircraft or object. So... Uh, uh, the the internet sees it, and this guy is like, I know exactly what this is. This is unfocused bokeh. And he recreates it exactly. He's like, these are what stars look like when it's not focused. When the, I think it's called the iris of the camera, is triangular. You know, they it open and close it to change how much uh, the light is, you know, for the speed, whatever. And uh, he's like, when it's out of focus and it's triangular, all the stars look like um, triangles. Airplanes look like triangles. This one's blinking. That's because it's an airplane. And they even identified which plane it was, like based on like the time and location that it was shot, going by, blinking, and it's just an unfocused blinking triangle because that's what happens when you have a triangular iris. Doesn't the Castle Doctrine let you shoot people on your property? I think they need almost they for really trespassing. Need yeah, we've got this friend, um, this guy, this crazy guy from the internet showed up to his house and tried to sissy hypno him. And so he came outside <laughs> and fired a warning shot. And now he's in a bit of trouble for firing a warning shot into the air because that's technically aggravated assault. In a school I, zone. I don't know if you caught the fact where I said the man was there to sissy hypno him, but that's the funny part. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know what he was There's... trying to hypnotize him into being a, uh, a, um, a femboy gay slave of his, a sexual slave, a servant. <laughs> uh, he was trying to turn him into a, a sissy. And a, I, my, my God, he all... If he hadn't fired that warning shot, he would have had him. He was this close. He had him under his <laughs> under his spell. Really, he was this close way, to the only reason on a pair Boogie, of fox ears yeah. and yeah. a little mini skirt. And, the only and, reason Boogie doesn't have a, an anal plug with a tail coming out of his ass right now is because of that <laughs> warning shot. You know, the only reason he's not in you know in an apartment somewhere tied to a radiator begging for for loads. <laughs> <laughs> What was that shit I said the other day? Like, or maybe he'd be very happy. The you don't know. Man. You don't know. Yeah, he'd be very happy. Man. Yeah. He'd be very happy boy. <laughs> he'd be very happy. Oh shit! Uh, so fucked up. So fucked up. <laughs> what is this world we live in? It's pretty things, pretty awful. Things seem simpler in the nineties. Yeah, we were younger. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> we were a nobody lot tried, younger. Nobody. There was no fear of being sissy hip note in the nineties. No. No. You two wasn't something I really, really thought about. Not that now every day it's all I think about. <laughs> no, it's being the only one of this crew that was alive in the '60s. Shit hasn't changed. 
I mean, we just have internet now. Everybody, we have phones. Like shit was crazy. Shit's been crazy since day one. We just now are very much more aware of it. I agree with you 100%. I'm, I was just kind of making a joke about the sissy thing, but Leah, I agree with you 100%. I think it's, I think if anything, it's tamer now and there's less violence. It's just that we hear about every yeah. scrap of it anytime because you can tell like whenever an, a specific kind of issue is sensitive, we get flooded with them. It's like, right. holy shit, are we in an epidemic of racial violence? It's like, no, no, no. The news networks just know that anything r edgy racially is big news today. So they're just like digging through the archives. White guy got stabbed. No good, no good. Asian guy got stabbed. No, no, that doesn't work. That's for next month. Um, <laughs> ah, That's for next a month. black man was stabbed. That's this month's headline. We're doing Asians next month. Just put it on the back burner. We'll use it next month. No, we're going to use it. Mr. Fam was, he's going to be big news for us. Don't worry. <laughs> That's this season two. Black, guys. That's <laughs> season two. That's a twist. We're saving that for sweeps. The thing is, you know, you, it's we also have our own echo chambers too. Like that, you know, is it, it mm -hmm. very true? Ripples, and it's just you know, what's what's this thing that if you see something three times, you recognize it. You see it seven times, you believe it. Is, is that is a psychological profile that has that that it's ratio? Probably something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in advertising, it's called frequency. The first time someone yeah. sees an ad, it doesn't make any imprint. They need to see it multiple times, and then over time, they start to associate your brand. I know that you're yeah. right, of that, and I've Lucy. heard that. <laughs> it surprises me though, because I, if I didn't know that, the untrained version of me would think that the first impression, the first time you hear about it, is the biggest impact. That's it, and every other one is like a little bit wasted. You know, I already know about this. I already know about this. But mm -hmm. and there's a lot of companies. That's all they're doing. Like Coca Cola is never going to say anything like specific about their flavor. They're a big enough. They just have to remind you that they're. How a, would a you drink. describe Coca Cola's? Flavor? Oh yeah, Coca Cola. That exists. That's enough to. I know exactly everything. They don't need to explain anything. Like you, you see know, it everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's, it's everywhere. It's Remind everywhere. me of good times I've had mm -hmm. with it, and and Coca Cola yeah. has a good ad. But yeah, I, I, like um, I don't know the F one fifty Lightning, right? I would have guessed that the first time you tell me about that is the best, most is better yet, the most important ad that you've done. But mm -hmm. it turns out it's the fourth or the sixth one that like lands the sale. And it depends, like if it's digital or if it's TV. TV takes a lot longer to build up frequency because people aren't paying full attention to. The, yeah. the commercial spots whereas like online like and i know i've done this personally like knowing about it doesn't keep you from it like I, you'll scroll down and you'll get like served an ad that's following you because of some cookie on some site and it's like that's a really interesting adjustable dumbbell i like that don't really think about it i, I remember that i saw it the other week you know it's like the third or fourth time it's like i don't click on the ad because it's gonna take me to some bullshit thing i just they wear you the down name of their they wear you down and they pique your curiosity just enough. And because they're following me with the like fitness equipment, the exact stuff, like weightlifting equipment, the stuff I want, like, like it, it's it's so fucking crazy how atomized digital marketing is. Like, like they know every company knows what you do, what you like. Like, if the government wants to know a little more about you, they don't go to some secret room. I mean, they have the NSA, but they're going to go to Procter and Gamble and Johnson and Johnson and the biggest you know consumer products and. If they want things about your day to day buying behavior and stuff, because they have yeah, it like, atomized and layered and so many other. Like, if J&J, like, they could take, like, from you, Woody, and be like, yeah, uh, Jackie is going to repurchase paper towels. We're estimating about four days from now. And it'd be like, oh, well, we were right. I figured you know, we, we were all getting the same ads, right? You guys are getting oh, no. motorcycle no, gear, a, weightlifting equipment, and anal plugs. No. no, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> one out of three ain't bad. But. You get those uh, the headbands with the ears on top. That ad, oh my god, it's the everywhere. The fox ears, the fox yeah. ears. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get ads for gay conversion therapy, but it, it, to make me, but to make it's me, to gay. make you gay. Yeah, it's, to make yeah. Me it, gay. it's literally sissy <laughs> hypno. Be, oh fuck, I've been, I've been, I've been paying these guys for months. Like, like I'll, I'll be on, Am <laughs> I'll go on Amazon and I'll look at like something that I'm thinking about getting that I don't need, like a new pair of boots. Like, like, mm -hmm. like I, I, I've already got. Three pairs of boots. They're all very nice. They're too nice. They're, I, I wasted money on each of these individual <laughs> pairs of boots. They're wonderful boots. And, and But then there'll be like a brown pair of like yucca boots, and I'll be like, those look nice. Those, uh, those gray uh, boots. Those gray boots are uh, nice. And, but it'll be, they'll be like $325. I'm like, I'm not spending $325 yeah. on a pair of fucking boots. Get out of here. I want them. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't earned a treat. I haven't yeah. earned a, a treat pair of boots this month. Like, forget about it. And then, like, all of a sudden, I'm like on some website, like looking at a recipe for like steak, 
and there's my fucking boots like yeah. down there in this little pop up ad. I'm like, man, those boots are sick. X. Yeah. <laughs> and like the fifth or sixth time, at like, like now they've reminded me like two weeks later, and I'm like, you know, I, I have been good. <laughs> <laughs> I have been good. <laughs> another thing, Amazon has another funnel trick I've been tracking. When I started buying this hatchet, I was looking for hatchets, and so I found one that was like maybe thirty four bucks, you know, thirty dollars. Oh, that's that's what I want. Some the price point that's good for me. It's affordable. And then they have that. All of a sudden, they pop up. Oh, other other things you may be interested in, and little increments of quality improvement. Like, oh, this one yeah. like, it has. Oh, it has this really good leather. Oh, this has got a special. This has got hickory instead of ash. And mm-hmm. one hundred twenty five bucks. I went from a pl- <laughs> perfectly useful one for thirty five dollars. I bought this. Swedish imported, you know, <laughs> with, you know designer leather. It's a hundred. Well, these chops are wood even better. <laughs> you could you could That's fight godly, a fucking you know? Swedish warrior with that shit. It's what a Viking would take to war. Oh, would you let? Wouldn't you rather have a Swedish berserker axe? Yeah, <laughs> goddamn right, I would. They sent me that. That's exactly what came up. A berserker. Oh man. I'm amused when they get it wrong. Right. So I bought. A dispenser for I don't know what you call wet toilet paper, but like a wet wipe, right? For adults. Yeah. Okay. Rather than have it in the dumb plastic thing, like we have a nicer, like push top sealed thing so they don't dry out. Good wet wipe dispenser. Cool. Guys, this is a one time purchase. I need one wet wipe dispenser and I'm yeah. cool. But the internet now believes that I am like a wet wipe dispenser aficionado. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Woody, can I interest you in more wet toilet paper dispensers? Can, how about this one? How about, wouldn't this be pimp in your toilet? And it's like, no, man. I'm, I only I'm, have one it's, ass. It's here. not really a hobby. <laughs> it was just time. a one time thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a hobby. Oh, I, uh, I wipe my ass. I'm really, really good. I'm really into it. You know, people like taste, taste whiskey. They use like different like essential oiled wipes. Like, Oh, that's very nice. Can, you know, I can feel the peppermint. I can feel the peppermint. Is that safe? Like, is that safe? You know, oh, my goodness, like, your, no, no, your no. anal tongue is quite... No, no, no. <laughs> it's like those guys who, like... It's, it's like how wine tasters will, like, put it in their mouths, but then they'll spit it back out. Like, you're wiping your ass, but then you're smearing it back on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> So you want to do it again? Oh, that was tremendous. That was tremendous. <laughs> I'm here for a very long shit. Oh, that was a good clean wipe. All right, let's put it back. It's my lucky day. It's a magic marker toilet. A magic marker yeah. poop. It just keeps wiping and wiping and wiping. Oh, I dream of this. <laughs> but yeah, I like it when they waste their advertising dollars on me. Mm-hmm. 